Hey, good evening. There's a new version of the RX Cam View app for this video system. So go to App Store on the Apple and search for RX Cam View. Search. So after I search for RX Cam View, I'll install it. Only takes a second. So it's installed, I'll open it, and it says I want to use Bluetooth. I don't see the need for this to use Bluetooth, so I'm not going to allow that. And it wants to send me notifications, I'll allow that. And I have to say privacy policy, software policy, whatever, allow. Okay, so it's telling me I need to add a device, so say OK. Add a device, IPC, DVR, NVR, and it says, I want to access your camera. Let's take a picture of that QR code. Okay, to do this, you need to find the QR code on this system. I, tr I have this trackball that I use with this system, and when it's not in use, I hide it up under the system, or behind it. So since it's a trackball, I get to use it up in the air like this. So if you right click, you get a menu across the bottom, it's locked if this is locked. So main menu and it'll ask you for your password and log in. You have two options here. If you have the wizard enabled, you'll get the wizard and you'll have to go through it to get to the screen. If you've disabled the wizard, it'll go straight to the screen. So what I need to do is go to system info and there's my QR code. So I'll take the app and scan that. And once it identifies it, it just goes and adds it. Now, what's your password? Remember, this is an eight character password only. The app limits it to eight. The system does not. Do not recommend you use your admin account. Use a different user. So there we go. Save. And it's telling you remove device, modify device, preview the device, and there's a QR code. So there we go, and we'll just hit play, and it pulls up the system, and it tells you this is what you're playing. You can create a group of cameras. There's a menu for additional options. I have this set to a one-minute timeout. So there we go. Pretty straightforward. It's got the, th it's got all eight cameras. Since three doesn't go into eight very well, you have nine spots. So you can change that. There's a grid here at the bottom. Just touch that, and it gives you all these options. Single view, four, eight, which are nine spots, 16. There's six, but I've only got four cameras. And I like this one. If I get two more cameras, I'll go to this one. And here's all eight cameras. But I like the four. That gives me the best view. There we go. And if you turn it sideways, you actually get a good view of that. There's the, there's the monitor on the wall, and there's my phone. Pretty close. Now, there are other options. Say I want to go into this. That tells me the four cameras that I've got selected for this view. If I go and do this, it tells me that I've got all of them selected. So I want to go back to the four. Say I want to look at saved footage. Just hit that play button, and it comes up and tells me frame by frame, slow, fast, play, pause, close. So what I'll do is select the camera and say times two. There you can see the screen. It's uh, kind of overexposed in this room. So it's playing them all, and you'll see cars go by on this street. Cars usually don't trigger the other three. The transition from nighttime to daytime or daytime to nighttime will be considered motion. Let's see if we can go faster. Four, eight, 16, 16. So you see those change. The car went by. There's the night transition to daytime. Transition to daytime should appear down here. Actually, that might have been transition to night. So you see they're out of sync because they don't all record at the same time. So it does tell you where it's taking place. There's a date and a time, and there was another vehicle. 
Now, this one, I moved it. It used to show the whole street. There goes the trash truck this morning. But right there is our mailbox, so I moved it to show more of the mailbox. It turns out I turned it too far down. And my wife wants me to go out and rearrange it so I see more of the street. And there was morning delivery of the paper. Works about the same as the other one. But the menu interface to me is so much better. Now it wants you to participate in the user experience. I don't want to do that. Now, so there's live. Now I set this up on my home network connected to Wi-Fi. I don't have to be connected to Wi-Fi to do this. It just makes it easier to set it up. If I turn off Wi-Fi, and go back into the app, there we are live again. So I, it, turning off Wi-Fi makes it just like I'm away from the house and it's working fine. There's some spider webs on this one. The porch light shines on these trees at night and the neighbor lady leaves lights on in her driveway and she actually requested we install a camera pointing to her house she's a little older and she wanted to know if people were messing around her house so and believe it or not our dogs stare at this and if someone goes near that house they start barking so it works out well there's the backyard that's the dog's play area okay so there you go new app lots of options uh, if you go into local config you got a few options password you can prevent automatic lock screen. That might be good if you want to monitor for a longer period of time. And if you go to remote settings, that's for the device in your house. Now, only if you log in as the admin account can you change these. It has an email set up to email yourself pictures of motion. I have Comcast. Comcast requires login to send emails from your house. This doesn't support the authentication doesn't log in so it won't allow it to send UPnP very important setting that you need to access the system outside your house if you don't enable that then your local router won't allow this in so it's actually a pretty good system and it says zero megs free because it fills itself up and then does a circular buffer so first recorded is the first out so, new interface, works great, does exactly what it's supposed to do. So, if you like the videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.